G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday just after lunchtime here in Australia, markets moved up ever so slightly, still under that $2.7 trillion mark, but big things are happening in this space, and I'll get to some stories that are going to demonstrate that very shortly. But BTC dominance dropped again, so now it's under 43%. We saw a little bit of volume, so obviously Monday, uh, everyone's trading in the big markets. Our Bitcoin price still under $62,000, down ever so slightly. Gas prices, though, I mean, this was, I'm talking 10 minutes ago, this was at $36. So gas prices are all over the place on Ethereum at the moment. They are just uh, crazy, up and down and all over the place. Uh, and again, it's people jumping in and out of different coins and doing smart contract stuff and, you know, going taking profits in stable coins and getting out. It's just, yeah, it is really hard <laughs> to play on the Ethereum space at the moment unless you're basically, you, you got a lot of money. I won't say a whale, but yeah, you've, you've got to have a lot of money to play in the Ethereum space at the moment. Not the Layer 2s, they're still super cheap, but on the main chain, oof really uh, expensive at the moment. Minimum $40, $50 for a very sort of basic transaction. You know, outside of simply just shifting some coins, that's a little bit cheaper. But otherwise, uh, I was on there before, and yeah, $40 per transaction, I just cancelled them. <laughs> Hopefully they don't charge me anyway, because sometimes there's a fee, even when you try and cancel them. I guess I'll know in the next sort of 24 hours. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? So in the top 100, we can see a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, some things have done well, others not so well. So what's leading the way? Oh, Sandbox just continues to go. Loopring smashing it. Mana, Polkadot, I mean, Engine. Look, again, all the kind of NFT, Metaverse kind of space things at the moment doing extremely well. Chili's up, Audius up. Uh, look, heaps of nice gains. Their stack's doing quite nicely. So look, some great gains. Plenty of double-digit gains and plenty of high single-digit gains as well. So what about on the flip side of the coin then? What hasn't fared so well in the top 100? There we can see XDC. I mean, that really just bounces around. It's sort of... You know, up one day, down the next. I don't know whether it's actually going up. We can see here it's going down in the 24 hours. But they're down 11%. Safe Moon uh, has gone down. That was up to, that was a 7, uh, literally just the other day. Now, Shiba Inu having a bit of a retracement. But there's some interesting news going on. And Matic, uh, again, that got up to $2, I think, maybe $3, $2.08 or something. And has now come down to $1.88. So some big moves in Matic. And again, we're going to get to some stories that I think is really going to explain what's going on with the market at the moment. So look, only one double-digit loss in the entire top 100. Uh, and plenty of double-digit gains. And then lots of high single-digit gains. And that is because the market moved up. And it was really only just over half a percent. So that's not a whole lot of movement. But let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. What can we see? Again, we've got this kind of semi-sideways action going at the moment. Now, this has dipped down. But again, this is kind of, you know, getting, um, you know, it's the early part of the week. We'll have to see what's going to happen. But we had this big peak up. We had this big peak down. And now we can basically, you know, probably draw some lines in there. And it looks like it might be forming a bit of a wedge. But we'll really just have to wait and see uh, what happens over the rest of the week again. As I said, everyone's expecting it to go up so high. I'm just not sold that it's going to do it. I think, again, we possibly go up a little bit, have a big sell-off, and, you know, I don't know where we come back down to. Maybe it's to around the $50,000 level. But, again, maybe, it, you know, we'll come back down to this kind of $40,000 level after getting to around about $80,000. That's a 50% correction. That'll really shake people out and have most people believing we're in a bear market. And then maybe it bounces back from there. Again, never financial advice. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a savant or anything like that. I don't know what's going to happen. It's just not going to surprise me. So as I said, at the moment, I'm not putting any more money in the markets. I'm just going to wait and see what happens uh, up to around sort of $90,000. And if there is a big correction, then I'm going to have uh, some cash sitting on the side to buy in. Uh, and if it just keeps going through, my bags are already packed. It's not going to make too much difference what I put in from here unless we're going into a super cycle. And then if we are in a super cycle, there's still going to be pullbacks. Uh, and now I'll just have plenty of cash sitting on the sides for those pullbacks. So that is where I'm at with the market. As I said yesterday, 
I just I get the feeling somewhere between seventy and that sort of eighty five thousand, we get a big correction that will change the market up at least slightly. Won't change it up that much, but it'll have a lot of people thinking, "Oh no, that was the top we're done." But I don't think that will be it. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Now, here's some stories that are going to make, or at least help me decide why I believe there's going to be a lot of just high volatility and why we have the markets bouncing up and down so much. So Digital Currency Group, they've been valued at $10 billion after they raised another $700 million. And from places like Google, so institutional money, it's still flowing in. And they are going to play every trick in the book to try and get you out. And they may even, I mean, I don't know if they will do this. And again, this is, you know, sort of conspiracy theory type stuff. Maybe they, you know, try and push it up fairly high and then just dump it all, hoping that they can buy back in really lower. I don't know if they would dump it all, but I can definitely see them, you know, playing big games because, you know, here's a story that has me worried. Peter Thiel says Bitcoin at $60,000 means the economy is facing real crisis. He's a pretty smart dude. He's been around for a while and he's already coming out and coming out, came out and said that he regrets not buying more Bitcoin when he bought. Because what he says here is, you know, people are saying, you know, Bitcoin's going to go up and yeah, maybe it will, but it surely tells us that we are a com- that we are at a complete bankruptcy moment for the central banks. I mean, that is definitely worrying if that is true. And again, Bitcoin goes up because of the money printing. And the dollar, even though it may change for a while, you know, we might get some massive deflation and stagflation and all the rest of it for a period of time, and it might last a couple of years, but it will not last forever. The only way dollar works is by printing more simple as that eventually they will turn on the printer again if they do stop it for any you know real length of time that's just the way it works every single you know fiat sort of currency that we've ever had in time it eventually goes to zero because governments print it and they print so much of it that suddenly it becomes not worthless but just it's not the thing that people want to touch anymore and they'll find something new Now, whether that's going to be a stable coin, you know, that might save the dollar for a while, but that is still the dollar. It's just a digital version of it. Eventually, they will just print it into infinity. And what comes after the dollar? You know, will we have a Bitcoin standard or will we have an XRP standard or an Ethereum standard? Who knows? But what uh, most people are saying, and this is my personal opinion as well, I think the dollar in, you know, whatever form it is, will be dead within the next 10 to 20 years. It just, particularly the US dollar at least anyway, and they'll probably just move on to some other dollar. Who knows what it'll be, or maybe they go a basket of dollars, you know, with some Bitcoin in there, who knows. But whatever kind of monetary system we go to that is controlled by a government, eventually it'll be wrecked. That's, that's just the way it's always gone. Hence why things like Bitcoin that aren't owned by governments and they have a fixed supply, they are most likely our best bet at having a stable currency for, you know, decades, if maybe not 100, 200 plus years to come. We'll have to wait and see. But if Peter Thiel is worried, then it gets me worried. But going back to this, again, digital currency group getting hundreds of millions of dollars poured into them from places like Google. CoinShares have come out and said in a report that institutional investors are pouring capital into Bitcoin Ethereum, Solana, and two other additional altcoins. And what are the additional altcoins? Polkadot starting to make a move with its parachains coming. It had $6.2 million in inflows compared to only $400,000 the week before. That is a massive move. Now, Cardano's remained around about the same, so it's got about uh, $5 million uh, being put into Cardano, and that's only down ever so slightly from $5.3 million. But look, the uh, Bitcoin saw, what's that, $286 million in inflows compared to a uh, hundred, no, compared to, I think that's a billion there, so $1.45 billion, uh the week before. So still plenty of money coming in. I mean, Ethereum too, getting $16 million after three consecutive weeks of outflows. So all of a sudden the money's coming back in. And that is what makes me think that, sorry, 
all of this kind of up and down stuff going all over the place. Uh, a lot of it is people taking profits, but also it's the big money. They are finally here and they are going to do everything they can to do to get as much of this as they can. I really believe cryptocurrency, it's going to revolutionize you know, the way we invest, the way we save, you know, sort of money, we can't even really call it money now, but the things we invest in. Now, are all of these going to be around in the next five years? No, probably not. Some of them will be and some of them won't. But if you are in good projects right now, there's going to be some violent swings, both to the upside and the downside. And if you can time it well, congratulations, that's awesome. But I think if you're in good projects and you simply hold, you come back in sort of five years time, you still need to keep an eye on it, but don't worry about trying to time it so much. And again, never financial advice, this is just my personal opinion. If obviously something isn't doing well and it's just a constant lagger, well then you've got to get rid of it and cut your losses sometimes because there's no guarantees it'll go back to its old all-time high. But if you're in a good project that sticks around and does well, it should well and truly make up for the projects that don't. Hence why you never want to put your money all in one basket. And when I say one basket, I mean one coin. There's plenty of people that are basically 100% crypto and they're doing well. Not that I recommend that. I'm just saying there's people that are and if they are lucky enough to get into a few good winners, the ones that lose, they will do extremely well. Again, like Bitcoin, you know, people were buying it for a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars once upon a time, and it's now trading at sixty-two thousand dollars. And a lot of smart people will say Bitcoin is going to a million dollars by twenty thirty. I think it probably gets there before twenty thirty, but hey, if you can buy something for sixty thousand and it's going to go to a million within the next sort of nine years. Where else can you get returns like that? I don't know anywhere else you can get returns like that. Now again, past performance is not indicative of uh, future performance. It doesn't guarantee anything. But there's been nothing that's ever transformed the financial landscape like cryptocurrencies have. So for me, I really plan on just kind of holding more so than trying to time the market. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely will take profits. I, uh, I will absolutely do that. But I would say at least half of everything that I have, I will hold on to. I'll try and sell it at a profit uh, and you know, try and time the market, but half the projects, I'll simply let the other half ride. And if it goes on to do amazingly, then that'll be great. I'll have that kind of moon bag and you know, try to buy back in and all the rest of it. But if they go to zero, then hopefully the other ones that I've invested in that have done really well will make up the difference. And that really is my sort of plan. Will I take profits? Yes. I don't plan on taking any major profits and particularly in Bitcoin, you know, it'd have to be over 100,000 before I'm really going to, you know, think about taking profits. I've, I've chopped and changed between how I felt about that, but I got it at such a good price. Again, I got my Bitcoin down at sort of $8,000. I don't know if Bitcoin will ever go back down to $8,000, you know, outside of some complete black swan event. So I'm kind of happy to really just let it ride. And once it gets over $100,000, then I'll at least start to think about it. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. You know, things can change. They always do. And then your perspective have to ch has to change. Bitcoin is my long-term savings at the moment, but it may not last forever. And I may have to look at other things. So I'll always keep an open mind. But at the moment, I just don't have any plans. Now, something very interesting. Crypto exchange Kraken is about to list Shiba Inu today. And you think it would pump, but we already saw... I've got wrong one sorry it's actually down 2.4 percent now not a whole lot but maybe this had something to do with why it's pumped so hard maybe there was some info inside information rumor it was going to get listed on kraken and that was part of why it pumped i don't know maybe not but it is coming back at the moment and usually it had pumped right up to about the day but then again yeah no that sounds about right pumping sort of you know a few hours before also Coinbase revenue could hit 50 billion by 2025. That's a lot of money. Now, the Coinbase uh, stocks have risen up to their uh, initial price. So I think they're about $400 at the moment. They did dip all the way down to 250 So if stocks were your thing and you were good enough to buy uh, Coinbase when it got down into the 200s, I think it might have even got to about $180 or something, then you've probably nearly doubled your money just uh, in a matter of months if you're lucky enough to buy. 
But also, if you bought, you know, when it first came out and you simply held, well, then you're probably at about break even. But if, you know, Coinbase really does make it to $50 billion by 2025, I think those shares are going to do pretty well. Now, I'm not into stocks at the moment, but speaking of stocks, here's one that I think I might have to have a look at. And it's happening here in Australia. So Mawson Infrastructure Group is listing a mining-focused ETF in Australia. So Bitcoin mining, things like that, Ethereum mining, although... Ethereum mining is uh, about to become a thing of the past shortly. So the ETF's top three holdings will be Galaxy Digital with a 14, sorry, a 20% allocation within the fund, while Hut8 and Marathon Digital will both have 14% uh, weightings uh, each by the sounds of it. So that sounds pretty interesting to me out of uh, sort of shares. Again, Coinbase still say, sounds interesting as well, but I would have rather bought it on the dip. So for me, I'll really be waiting to see if there are any big dips, i.e. again, any bear markets, and that's where I might look to uh, buy up some of these stocks. Because at the moment, I just I feel like we're at least somewhere near to a top, so I'm not going to be putting any more money into the crypto market. I'm simply happy to let what I have ride. You know, I've got a good position and I'm going to have cash sitting on the side for sure. Again, maybe, you know, all these uh, stocks that I like, maybe they have some dips. I get into them. And again, maybe some big dips in the actual market. And I'll simply be looking to buy back in on those dips. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.